Hey everybody, this is Tom from A Board Gamer. Welcome to spring. The flowers are blooming, the birds are chirping, and the bees are experiencing an economic boom. You heard correctly, the bees have found by selling their honey in the bear market, their hives are left safe from hungry hands and are allowed to grow and prosper. Will this prosperity continue? It is up to you as you and other players compete to prove you have the best strategy to keep this incline going in Honey Buzz. Honey Buzz is a one to four player game for ages 10 and up with an average gameplay length of 45 to 90 minutes. Published by Elf Creek Games. In Honey Buzz, each player will take turns sending out their bees to collect hive tiles to improve their own personal hive. When a honeycomb is complete, you will need to fill it with a matching nectar tile to eventually produce honey. By having multiple types of honey, you can sell them or complete orders to collect coins and points. When the market price of four types of nectar reaches the lowest point, or when two of the three order stacks are emptied, finish the round so everyone takes the same number of turns, and then the game ends. Add together coins, honey and pollen, contest points, and order card points, and the player with the highest total points wins. To set up the game, begin by placing the two boards on the table. Today, we will be playing a standard three player game. So we will use this side of the hive board and this side A of the woodland board for a standard game. Then separate the standard hive tiles by type while setting aside the starting hive tiles identified by the player color backs for now. Place the stack of new B tiles in the top left, decree tiles below that, and the accounting tiles on the bottom left. On the top right we have the forage tiles, below those the produce tiles, and the bottom right are the market tiles. Next we will select one random queen contest card of each color, but for our first game we should use the cards marked with the star. We will then place them in the middle of the hive board and if desired, depending upon the number of players, place 20 coins for first place, 10 coins for second, and 5 coins for third. In a 4 player game, all 3 places pay out. In a 3 player game, first and second pay out. In a 2 player game, only first place pays out. Now on the woodland board, place all the coins pollen, and honey near the board. Sort order cards into two piles, small and large. Shuffle each and create three stacks. In a two player game, each stack should have two large orders at the bottom and one small order on top. In a three player game, two large orders on the bottom, two small on top. And in a four player game, two large orders on the bottom and three small on top. Place each stack below the market and flip the top card face up. Now onto the market track. Place one of each type of honey on the highest level of its matching color. Also place a random pollen on its column. If playing with two players, move each resource down one. Next, separate each nectar tile by type and in a two player game, remove two tiles of each type. In a three player game, remove one of each type. And in a four player game, use all nectar tiles. Shuffle all remaining tiles together and randomly place them, filling all rows and columns from the left to the right. Now let's select the first player. This can be done by random or by the person who woke up the earliest today. They will receive the honey dipper to indicate they are the starting player, and in clockwise order, each player will receive a player aid, matching color sets of a player board, four starting hive tiles, ten worker beeples, one fan, and one forage token, or fuzzy beeple in the deluxe version. Place all beeples to the side for now. Depending upon turn order, the first player will have one worker and will collect five coins from the supply. 
the second player will have one worker and 10 coins from the supply. The third player will have one worker and 15 coins from the supply. And finally, if there is a fourth player, they will have two workers and five coins from the supply. Next, select a single configuration card for each player to model their starting tiles after. Green cards are the standard and yellow are for more veteran players. In your first playthrough, the configuration with the star is recommended to be used. Each player will configure their hive in front of them exactly as shown on the card. Next, randomly or in reverse turn order, each player will place their forage token on the left edge of the field. No players can occupy the same location and with all of that complete, you are ready to start the game. On each player's turn, you must take one of two moves. That is, take a tile or recall all workers. When taking a tile, you must first make a beeline. This is done by placing a beeple on a location of the tile you desire to take. If there are already beelines there, you must place the same number of workers plus one as the tallest beeline. If you do not have enough bees, then you are not allowed to go to that location. This rule still applies even if you went there on a previous turn. You must still make a taller bee line if you wish to take the same action. And if you do not have enough beeples for any location, you must recall your workers. Now continuing with taking a tile. Once collected, you can expand your hive. This is done by adding the new tile to your hive with at least one yellow edge touching a yellow edge of another tile already in your hive. No other edges are allowed to touch other than the yellow edges of each tile. If the place tile creates an empty cell like this, you may take all actions around the cell in any order. If you happen to complete two cells at once, you can take all actions in both cells, but any overlapping actions can only be taken once. When you no longer have any beeples to place in the hive board, you may recall your workers. You will retrieve all your workers, including any new workers you might have obtained from the new bee hive box. Then, if you wish, you may move your forage token one space for free. You cannot pay to move additional spots, nor can you collect any nectar or pollen. This is just a free movement that can occur whenever you recall your workers. Now let's go over the actions that can be taken with each cell. The first cell we will look at is the new B cell. Once activated, you may place a new worker from your supply into the nursery in the new beehive box to use in future turns after you recall all your workers. Another cell you will come across is the accounting cell. This cell allows you to collect five coins from the supply. One of the more important cells is the forage cell. This allows you to move your forage token one space for free, and you may move any additional spaces for the cost of two coins per space. All movement must be orthogonally and never diagonally. You can always move through or share a space with another forage token or an empty space. If you end on a nectar tile that matches any empty cell in your hive, you may collect it and add it to your hive. For reference, you can check the back of your player aid for the colors needed for each nectar tile. But if you land on an empty space or a nectar tile you have no space for, you gain one pollen instead. Once you have gained nectar tokens, you want to keep an eye out for the produce tile. This tile's action allows you to place your fan token onto any space on your hive. When placed, any adjacent nectar tile will immediately produce one honey of its matching type. Then place that type of honey on the nectar tile. If there is already a honey on that tile, you may not gain a second honey. Each tile can only hold one honey at a time. Once all honey is gained from placing the fan, 
Remove the fan from your hive for future use. After you have gained honey, you may want to seek out the market tile. This tile's action allows you to either sell at the market or complete an order. When selling to the market, you can choose one type of honey or pollen to sell. You can sell any amount of a single type of resource and you can gain the number of coins for each item sold according to its value. After being sold, the resource will move down by one level no matter how many resources of that type were sold. If the resource is at its lowest point of the market, move any other resource of your choice down by one. If you decide to complete an order instead of selling to the market, you will choose one of the face-up order cards and turn in the appropriate honey requirements from your hive to the supply to collect the order card. Place the order card in front of you and keep it for final scoring. Once collected, you must take the bonus action if possible listed below the order stack you just completed. This can be done any time during your turn, just as if it was part of a completed cell. Once you end your turn, flip the next order card on that stack face up to be completed in future turns. The final tile you'll encounter is the decree tile. But be aware when collecting this tile from the hive box, not only do you need to provide a worker, you must also pay five coins to collect this tile even before adding it to your hive. But if you do collect this tile, the decree action acts as a wild action. This will let you perform any one of the other actions. It can be an action you have already taken or a different action. Players will continue taking turns collecting tiles and building their hive until at least one of these two things occur. Once four of the five resources are at their lowest points, or two of the three order stacks have been emptied. The game will continue until all players have taken the same amount of turns, and then it will end. Next, begin to tally all your collected points. Start by adding all your coins. The total value of the coins is equal to that many points. Next, move on to any leftover honey or pollen in your hive. Each one is worth one point. Now add any additional points from the contest. Remember, some places may not be scored depending upon the number of players, and any speed contests are usually paid out upon completion during the game. If there are any ties, all tied players will receive the total amount. However, the next player's amount will be decreased by one place. For example, in a four-player game, both tied players will receive 20 points, but the player that came in second will only receive 5 points. And finally, add the points from any and all completed orders, and the player with the most points wins. If tied, the player with the most leftover resources, and if still tied, the most completed orders. And that is how you play Honey Buzz. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.